<laughs> the fuck is this? The best writing is when you can create scenarios that move the plot where you want it to go, but the scenarios feel organic, right? You're not just showing up at a party the same day your ex is at a party when you've got a woman you said you've never dated before and you're with a new woman you said you've never dated before, but then your ex is there at the party. Like, and this is a party in the middle of the country. She lives on the West Coast. You live on the East Coast. You guys are both driving across the country in opposite directions. You happen to stop at the same party. Ridiculous, right? That's absolutely ridiculous. They would never. Uh, shows will do this. Movies will do this. They show up at the airport at the same time. You know how many fucking airports there are in the world, and like how many like time windows are. You could be you and me could be at the same airport on the same day in the same location, and miss each other by three hours, right? Just because the way it works. Ridiculous. The good writers start here. Okay, this is what we want. We want Jimmy to leave at the beginning. We want him to be back in Atlantic City by episode nine. But in the meantime, we want him to level up, get more confidence, start earning more money, start creating a network of badasses that he surrounds himself with and show, doing things that show that he's, he's, a, he's a changed person. He leaves, he changes, he's going to come back a different person. We want all this to happen by episode nine. So how do we get him back? And have him still be salty and not be like, oh, man, I miss Nucky. I love Nucky. Let me go back to him. Like, you, that doesn't make much sense. So you make it so that Eli gets shot in episode eight, and that's what brings Jimmy back, right? But Eli gets shot because he gave another guy a day off because he's trying to show himself that he's as good as Nucky. See, A follows B, follows C, follows D. Like, it's just Eli's ego, which has been established for episodes on, on end, Feels inf insecure and inferior. So he's going to overcompensate and he's going to do things that are not smart. Like just stop by with his wife and not have any guys with him or anything. You know, late at night for a money pickup. Overconfident. Overcompensating. And then that's what brings Jimmy home. See, it's it's all like it, it, it serves the character. It shows us a lot about Eli. It makes sense. They've established Eli's like this. You know, Nucky happens to be out of town because he, he happens to be in Chicago where Jimmy is, be, and that's where the convention probably was. And it makes sense Jimmy went to Chicago because there was a huge mob influence. Like, it all fucking works, man. It feels like real life. You know? Like, I went to college for a, on a football scholarship, but I didn't go pro because I hurt my hip. But I stayed in college. I got the scholarship for the rest of the year and, and earned uh, good enough grades that they gave me another scholarship. Like, you know, it all fucking works. That was like a half-written little story I was doing there. I'm just saying, like, you know, if you want somebody to come... He, he comes from a poor background, but he gets a full college education, how the fuck do you explain that? Okay, well, let's th let's have it be a football scholarship. Because that makes sense. Because he wouldn't have the finances and the resources. Because his parents are poor, he'd have to work. He wouldn't be able to get good grades enough to be able to get a scholarship. So let's do a football scholarship. Yeah, but we don't want him to have, like, be a, have a football career. You know, we got other things we're doing with this plot. Well, okay, then, like, he, you know, he's good enough to get a football scholarship, but he's not good enough to be in the pros. Well, you know, then we got to explain he's not good enough and show all that. No, let's just have him blow out his knee or something. But then the rest of the year, because, like you say, you blow out your knee in, in um, September, right? You get your, your the rest of your year. You get your scholarship for the rest of the year. Then they're going to kick you out of the scholarship, right? If you can't come back and play football next year. The coach will pull your scholarship. Well, then that rest of the year, he really worked hard. He focused only on his grades. He got good enough grades that he was allowed to get. Plus, he had endeared himself to the management at the college, right? Which allowed him to get scholarship. So then, that's how you explain in a couple short scenes, or maybe just a converse, couple conversations, if this shit happened in the past, how he got a full college education when his parents are broke as fuck. It all makes sense. It's all organic. You start here. This is where we wanted to end up, and you work your way backwards. But then you show it forwards. So it feels inevitable. You worked backwards, but you show it forwards. So it all locks into place. It all feels inevitable. The problem is, a lot of these shows, they re they work through, they realize what they want an episode or two before they're there. So they don't have time to establish any shit. They never worked backwards. They're writing by the seat of their pants. And so everything's just haphazard and random. You don't have to plan out the entire series, but you plan out the character arcs. Okay, this character arc, this is what we want by here. And then you drop little breadcrumbs in every episode. I can talk about this for days, man. This is one of the better written series I've ever seen. It's so, there's so much going on. There's so many moving pieces and it all feels so uncontrived, so organic.
Writers are just nailing this shit. That's why I spend so much time talking these fucking intros and outros. I need to shut the hell up and get to the reaction. Let's do that. This is episode nine. It's called uh, Belle Femme or whatever. Probably some French shit. <laughs> but it's them, right? You're sure these are the guys? Yeah, that sure. Look? Whatever. These three, definitely. This is the little prick. <laughs> he is a prick, isn't he? Bastard called me fat. They're fucking killers, George. Sounds to me like you got a <laughs> well, Sure, I was just... Yeah, but he fat shaved me. I need to talk to my brother. Feel Be sure to do the thing with your fingers in the pictures. Maybe you'll remember better. That was weird. Oh, maybe they had, Yeah, they had masks on. Never mind. He was trying to get the eyes. These fucking guineas. They're desperados, Nook. We gotta track them down. I'm already on it. Before they spill more blood. It's ink. You see the paper oh, today? Shit. doesn't like to upset me. Yeah, <laughs> you would be upset. Reformer running. Oh my God! Not a reformer. Interview alleging corruption in both the mayor's oh, and the shit. sheriff's office. Now your ass is on the line. Even question what Sheriff Eli Thompson was doing oh, at an illegal shit. casino with. He was trying to make a bust. So what? How's he know I wasn't answering a call? Because he knows yeah. Eli. Everybody You're dirty. does. Just never made the paper before. <laughs> that is kind of awkward to have to explain. What about your spleen? Doctor Saran says Man, you should fuck rest. rest. I rest when I'm dead. Oh wait. Why do you rest your spleen? <laughs> How do you run? What a dumbass. I don't think the spleen is useful anymore, is it? It's like the appendix. Let me... No, a spleen has something to do with uh, your antibiotics or your, your immune system. It has something to do with your immune system. I'll look it up when I take a break. But, like, I think it has something to do with your immune system. Like, you can live without it, but your immune system won't be as good. It was driving me crazy. I had to make sure I was right. The spleen controls the level of white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. It screens the blood and removes any old and damaged red, red cells, red blood cells. Does that part of the immune? I guess the level of white blood cells um, has to do with your immune system. You know, white blood cells are what combat, you know, the uh, infection and shit. The spleen is a fist sized organ in the upper left hand side of your abdomen next to your stomach and behind your left ribs. So, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, right about here. It's an important part of your immune system, but you can't survive without it. This is because the liver can take over many of the spleen's functions. Hey, man. Yo, 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 yo. A normal person's liver can take over the spleen's functions. But what about a motherfucker who drinks a lot? What about that? I think I should not be getting shot in my spleen anytime soon. <laughs> but that's why people... Because I've heard, uh, The reason I know about this is because I watch a lot of football. And sometimes football players get... Fuck, I guess they get hit right here, right? hit really fucking hard, and their spleen bursts, and the spleen has to be removed, right? I've heard about that before, and, like, these football players are still alive, so I assumed you could live without spleen, but I thought it wasn't like the appendix. It actually still serves a function. You know, I think the, the appendix originally was uh, a way to digest bone. Like, motherfuckers be eating, these fucking cavemen, eating bones. Motherfuckers are eating bones, man. So we had to have a fucking organ to take care of that. Finally, when we stopped being so fucking stupid and spit the bone out... We don't need the appendix anymore. That's what they think. They're not sure. But cavemen were fucking stupid. Just say. When I first heard Harding, I thought it was him running for president. Dumbass. He loves me. I was just trying to make a conversation. You're a one-track mind. But America needs him. Oh, you're making him. You're making her sad. Look at her, man. She looks like she's ready to cry. So now you're going to get your old shitty job. Nice. Marit. Good morning. Make this happen. This is a friend of mine, Miss Nan Britton. She Nucky needs this to happen. The season. Oh, okay. I, I thought she was getting her job. Never mind. Marishka? Oh, this is your new girl, huh? Marishka! Oh, new girl's going to suck, so she's going to get a job. Excellent. See the mademoiselle to the Yeah, new girl sucks. Huh? Get it, fire her ass. She's terrible. Car waiting to be <laughs> What a miserable cut. This Polish girl. No grace. <laughs> Racist no as fuck too, by the way. I had like a cabbage. But she will work for pennies. Yeah, I take advantage of her. See what I am reduced to? <laughs> yeah, she's not so bad now, is she? She was man. better. Oh shit. Twist the knife. My dear Marguerite. Blossom. You better kiss my Mr. ass now. Thompson is quite generous with his attention. Wow, that's right. As ladies, as he must be here. Yeah. But the cost is very high. I must <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> That's right. Play the, play the sympathy card. Now I must pay oh, love. shit. Everyone must. Really? I am a woman alone. Yeah, but you were a terrible boss, so fuck off. Not speak with your alderman. You can speak for me. Okay, but you gonna wet my beak? I'll take that dress over there. I, I wouldn't know what to say. The things that make you pretty for him. If there is no better. Ha, and we have an episode title. This is going to be a Marguerite-centric uh, episode, isn't it? Her day in the limelight. You do not suspect. That's right. Gas her up. You and your men wire every department from... Why do you walk hunched over? Right. Oh, shit. Jesus. <laughs> well, notice would have been nice. So fucking I irritable. Sent a telegram. We have received nothing. <laughs> I will call the Western <laughs> Union. <laughs> you <laughs> should, minion. Meanwhile, get the fuck out of here. I'd offer you coffee, but it looks like you already helped yourself. <laughs> no, your minion helped me. Haven't been home. I thought I should see you first. That's why the telegram man arrived. I assume you've accepted my offer. What conditions? Oh shit! Bro, you met him in Chicago. The man in the iron mask. Yeah, he's a war hero. And he can, he can punish motherfuckers. What's under there? He's missing his cheekbone. It's basically the whole left side of his. He face can still shoot though. And he's still alive. Yeah, he's a bad motherfucker. Medicine, huh? Tough as nails, man. A lot of still alive probably shouldn't be. Well, I know a few might He can make some motherfuckers unalive. Make it happen. The Delessio brothers. I Another think. condition. We keep what we discuss only between us. Well, that's typical business. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. That's what you're saying. Leave us! <laughs> Jesus, man. Next time it takes so fucking long. Look at you calling shots. They're the guys that run the casino. Yeah. I know Neil as well. Leo. We're all named after Pope. Yeah. The Vatican. Fake names. See if they know where they are. Nah, fake names. That's what he's saying. When I find yeah. them. Dispense of justice. What do you want me to do? <laughs> you need me to spell it out? <laughs> how you say it? Why? Yeah, what's up? I'm, I'm wearing a tape recorder. That's why. Politician to the last, huh? Grease them. That's what I want you to do. Or are you just trying to kid yourself? About what? Are you weak or not? Murderer. That's what I want to know. That is what you want me to do. Right? Ish. Kill them. I want you to grease them. <laughs> Even the kid? Hell yeah. Fuck it. He should have stayed home. Remember, my boy gets a paycheck too. I'm going to go eat my steak. <laughs> <laughs> so much fucking t uh, brandleness there. So much uh, up in your feelings. You know, we didn't see him get to say goodbye to Al. I thought that'd be a big deal, right? Like, you know, Al would be pissed off. He probably played the family card. That's my headcanon. You know, Al, he's a big believer in family, so he's all about it, right? These are the fellas I told you about. It's Leo Delessio. You've heard of me. Naturally. Yeah. Who ain't, huh? And what is it you've heard? Good stuff. You know, that I'm honest. I heard you're a piece of shit, but, you know. Oh, I God damn, I'm going pulling out huge fucking wads of money, man. Eight ball, five hundred dollars. You bro oh shit! Had two ways to make money in the alcohol business. One is to take cheap rot gut whiskey, dilute it, and sell. Yeah, but that sucks. But that myself—that's the stupid. Yeah, thing yeah. In which I have no interest. So get out, dumbass. How about you let the guy finish next time? Demand for good whiskey in the United. Yeah, that's what I want. Good whiskey. Talking about the swill you stirred up in your chamber pot. God damn. I have, you know, I use a bathtub like everybody else. <laughs> There's a fortune to be made from importing it. You just gotta run the, uh... It'll be the chic thing to have good whiskey when you have guests. But... You just gotta run the blockade, that's all. I want to set up a business that. for importing you know, scotch. close-ups every time they do these trick shots, right? Put it outside the three-mile limit. All we have to do is smuggle it ashore. They don't give a shit about three-mile limit. That's no wives' tale. They'll board your ship 30 miles out, man. Believe that. I'd make a deal with such a man. But you people annoy me. I find Nucky Thompson. Oh, we're talking read. about Nucky, okay. Nothing a bullet in the eye won't fix. Shut your mouth. If you'll each sign those forms, I'll take it as your acquiescence to our new arrangement. Yeah, we got paperwork, man. I didn't. I was going into mob business to get out of paperwork. We're handling large amounts of my money, gentlemen. It's my assurance you won't. Oh, shit. Think of it as an incentive. Not to screw <laughs> things up. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I can just take you out of the fucking uh, yard and shoot you in the head right now. Get me paid. 
Not quite that simple, but you know, we can arrange accidents. I'll show you out. I wanted to see who won the bet. You know what the nice thing is about the Bronx Zoo, Charlie? They're idiots. There's bars between you and the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs>